Your next example for your day two notes over linear programming read as follows. Fancy Fun Woodworkers has a store on Etsy Bell that currently sells cornhole boards and chess boards. Cornhole boards make a profit of $80 each, take 10 hours to make, and require 15 square feet of plywood. Whew, that's a lot of information. Profit of $80, 10 hours to make, require 15 square feet of plywood. Okay, let's move on to chess boards. Chess boards make a profit of $25 each, take five hours to make, and require five square feet of plywood. Okay, that's a lot of information. The owners are limited to 80 hours of labor next month with no more than 90 square feet of plywood available. Those sound like restrictions to our product, limitations, constraints, if you will. How many should they make and sell of each to maximize their profits? So we're wanting to maximize profits, but what are we asked to find? How many should they make and sell? So they should make, well, they're making cornhole boards and chess boards. We're asked to find how many of each they should make. Those sound like our decision variables. So let's define our variables. We'll let X equal the cornhole boards. And I like to, geez, I could write that a little better. The cornhole boards and we'll let Y equal the chess boards. Okay, so how many should they make? Okay, we're asked to find how many of X and how many of Y they should make in order to maximize their profits. So that's our objective. We want to maximize profits. So let's write our objective function. Again, I like to write it as an equation where P equals, right, if it were cost, so we wanted to minimize it, we'd write C equals, we'd be looking for a minimum value. But a lot of people say, you know what, this is not an equation, it's just an expression. So whatever I put right here is my objective function. But I like to have P equals, okay, the profit. We're looking for profits. Well, what do we know? We know that cornhole boards make a profit of $80 each, and cornhole boards are X. So 80 times X would give me the total profit that I would make on the cornhole boards. And then chess boards make a profit of $25 each. So 25 plus the number of, or times the number of chess boards is gonna be the total profit I make on chess boards. When I add those two together, I'll get the total profit. So that is my objective function, okay? Now let's write our constraints. So what are our limitations? What are we restricted to, if you will? Where we are restricted to, let's see, the number of hours of labor. We're restricted by hours and we're restricted by the plywood, right? No more than 12 square feet of plywood. So let's write um, some inequalities based on those restrictions. Let's write our hours constraint, okay? Well, let's see. Um, if chess boards, or no, let's look at cornhole boards. They take 10 hours to make, all right? 10, out, 10 um, hours times the number of cornhole boards, that'll give me the total hours it takes me to make cornhole boards. Plus, chess boards take five hours to make. So plus five times the number of chess boards. And again, we're limited to 80 hours, which means the amount of time that is spent making these cornhole boards and chess boards needs to be less than or equal to 80, right? So there's my, um, there's my constraint for the time, okay, the hours. So let's now move on to um, our plywood constraints, right? We don't have a bunch of wood to work with. So I do know that cornhole boards um, require 15 square feet of plywood, chess boards require five square feet of plywood, and I don't have any more than 90 square feet of plywood. So cornhole boards are gonna be 15 times X. Chess boards are going to be plus five times Y, right? So that'll give you the total amount of plywood and that total amount of plywood used needs to be less than or equal to 90. So now we've got our two constraints um, dealing with hours and um, hours for labor and plywood, square feet of plywood that we're gonna use. So the next thing that I need to do is set my non-negativity constraints. 
which are that x is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, I'm obviously, um, I can make, you know, zero cornhole boards, but I'm not going to make negative one cornhole boards, right? And then y is going to be greater than or equal to zero. So we've defined our variables, written our objective function, and now we've listed our constraints, and we're now going to graph those constraints on this coordinate plane that I have provided for you with a scale by ones. So if I don't scale by ones, I will have it already scaled for you on your assignment. So let's graph our non-negativity constraints, and that would be that x is greater than or equal to zero. Oop. I'm drawing this as straight as I can on here, and that the, is the line x equals zero, and here's the line y equals zero. Okay, so um, I know that if I graph greater than or equal to zero for both of those variables, um, I'm restricted to the first quadrant on my coordinate plane. So let's now um, graph this hours constraint. So I'm going to solve it now. I've got 10x plus 5y is less than or equal to 80. And I'm going to solve for y because I'm going to be graphing it. So I'm going to subtract 10x from both sides, negative 10x plus 80. And then when I divide both sides by 5, I get y is less than or equal to negative 2x plus 16. Okay, so here is a linear inequality that I am going to graph. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph um, my y-intercept all the way up to 16. So let's see, that is going to be up to, if I count up to 16, that's this one right here. 16 um, is the y-intercept there, and then my slope is negative 2. So down one, down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, and then I'm just going to like plot a bunch, a bunch of points on this line all the way down. And if this were on a sheet of notebook paper, I'd put a straight edge up to that and graph the straightest line possible. But I don't have that, so that's the line that we're working with. Okay, so the inequality is y is less than or equal to this line, this boundary line, but that line is the equation y equals negative 2x plus 16. So I know if I'm graphing less than that, it's going to be below it, and I've got like that little corner triangle right there that I've graphed at this point. So um, let's move on now to the plywood constraint. That's going to be 15x plus 5y is less than or equal to 90, and we're going to solve for y. So I'm going to move that x term over to the left side of my inequality symbol, and when I divide both sides by 5, everything gets divided by 5, I get, um, oh, you know what, let's see, did I do that right? 15x, um, I didn't write that, there we go, that didn't make sense, okay, minus 15x, I wrote negative 5x, so when I divide both sides by 5, I get y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 18, and the same thing there. So now I'm going to graph this line, that boundary line, y equals negative 3x plus 18, and then we'll do our shading. So my y-intercept is at 18, which is right there, and then my slope is negative 3. So I'm going to go down 1 over 3, or I'm sorry, down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1. There's a point of intersection right there, right? Down 3 over 1 down 3 over 1, and this is a steeper slope, so that's why it looks like that, and whoops, we will connect all these points in our boundary line, looks like Christmas, red and green, and that line is y equals negative 3x plus 18, okay, and my um, inequality is y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 18. So I've got um, a couple things going on here. Um, it's going to be less than this line. So this is a little bit tricky. Um, when I do my shading, um, it's going to be, whoops. So this boundary line is like right here. I didn't do a very good job graphing. Okay, so it's going to be below that red line up until it gets to this point right here, okay, where that point of intersection right there, and then we're lower than the green line, okay? So we're lower than the red line, and now we're just lower than the green line, 
okay? And there's my feasibility region, right? Every point in that shaded region satisfies all of these constraints right here, all right? But I wanna maximize profits. If you minimize or maximize um, this problem, also called optimization, right? What's your optimal solution? It's gonna occur at one of the vertices. So I'm gonna identify all of my vertices. There's a vertex, there's a vertex, there's a vertex, and there's a vertex. So I have four vertices and let's list those out. So the first one's gonna be at zero, zero. Obviously, I mean, just for the sake of doing this, we're gonna list it out, but obviously we know we're not gonna make zero cornhole boards and zero chess boards to maximize our profit. So if you don't want to, you don't even have to write that down, but we're going to just for the sake of just completing this. Then I have this point up here, which is 0, 016. And then if I'm going kind of like in my little clockwise motion, I'm gonna find that point right there. If you were maybe in more upper level math, college math or pre-calculus, I might have you take this line right here and this line right here and prove that that is the point of intersection. Okay, how could you do that? You know set up your system of equations and solve for your x and y variables. And when you do that, you get the point to 12 is the point of intersection, okay? That's the solution to that system of equations. And then you have this point right here, which is six zero. So now we're gonna take each of those points and we're gonna plug it into our objective function for x and y and get what our profit would be if we made that many x cornhole boards and that many Y chess boards. So let's do that. Okay, so in this first one, obviously 80 times zero plus 25 times zero, I'm gonna get a profit of zero. And the next one, 80 times zero plus 25 times 16, I'm gonna get a profit of $400. Okay, so that's, um, zero cornhole boards and 16 chess boards, okay? In the next one, 80 times two plus 25 times 12, I'm gonna get 460. And that would be, you know, if I made, or fancy fun woodworkers, sorry, not me, but fancy fun woodworkers made um, two cornhole boards and 12 chess boards. And then in the next one, I'm gonna do 80 times six plus 25 times zero, and I'm gonna get 480, which is what would maximize profit, okay? That is the highest value of P, okay, in this case. So 480, which means this point right here is 480 at six zero, so in order to maximize their profits, they would just make six cornhole boards and zero chess boards. And let's write that down in our conclusion because since we're talking about a word problem and we've shown all of this work, we do need to state our conclusion, which I'm going to write right over here, very small. Therefore, they should make Make and sell, I'm gonna say make and sell, right? Cause they can't make any money if they don't sell it. Make and sell six cornhole boards, cornhole boards and zero chess boards. They're just not making any money. Chess boards to maximize their profits. Maximize their profits. And that concludes your notes over day two, linear programming. I know it's a lot, but it's really fun once you get the hang of it. So I hope it was helpful.